Big boy, big boy on the rails. Welcome back to Old Frail and Decrepit. Today we're going to have a look at a video that I made some time ago, but I've kind of hesitated to bring it out because it runs kind of long. I think by the time it's all done, it's going to be about 23, 24 minutes long. It's a video of me doing a service on a very old locomotive. Now, the motor in this has probably been replaced because this is a post-war motor in it, but... Uh, I had some problems with it, so it took about twice as long as it usually does. But you'll get to see step by step what I did in servicing this, the most common type of Mark's motor. And then at the end, we'll see if it'll still run. So here we are with the Mark's Army Supply Train number 500 that I picked up. I'm going to... Take it apart, give it a quick cleaning on the works, a little oil, a little lube, and replace the headlight on it. So, take the motor out on a Marks, and I would suggest doing this to any of the old Marks that you pick up. First thing to do, take, them, take the motor out, make sure he's got oil and lube and any uh, and any cleanup that it might need so just the two screws to take the body off now I I'm assuming that this light bulb needs to be replaced because it wasn't lighting when I was running it so let me have a look here uh, yeah, that one's toast. And we'll be putting an LED in its place anyway, so. Now, we'll, next thing we'll do is we will take the, the brush plate off here. Take the screw out here. Notice that screw looks an awful lot like the other ones there, doesn't it? And then these two nuts, then that plate will be able to be just pulled right up off of there. We can bring, we can put the brushes back in after we put the plate back on because those springs lift up out of there. knows how long it's been since this plate's been off, if it's ever been off. Okay, that side's loose, and there we go. And that comes right up out of there. And there's the two brushes. Now they don't look too bad, really. So they just need a little cleaning. So we'll just give them a quick rub down here. I usually don't put anything on them to clean them. Now, you can see the Commutator plate on that, pretty carboned up, pretty dirty. So what I use is a, a fiberglass pencil. Just give it a brushing till it's shiny.
those of you who watch SMT know that he's he always reminds you to clean out those little gaps. So we'll get this shiny and then we're going to clean those gaps out. I've seen some of these a lot worse where they're just absolutely black. And just run that down through there just to get the carbon out of there. All right, so as you can see, that looks a lot better there. So now we'll pull them springs up out of there and we'll clean the tubes that the brushes go into. All right, let's pull the springs up out of the way. And what I usually do pull them up to the side and just Oop. okay just like that see they put the spring off to the, the side of the tube I don't know if you can see that too well or not but you put it off to the side there just so it's up and out of the way do that with the second one here. And that'll make, that'll clean it up, enough, or that'll make clearance so we can get the Q-tip in to clean those tubes. And then it'll also be, make it easier for putting the brushes back in. And you can see a little bit of gross in there. Get the next one here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is going to like this a lot better. All right. When you go to put this back together, you got to make sure that that... The, that that whole assembly here is back in place because if you don't, it's going to bind up on you. So you got to get the get it meshed up on this side. All right, you pig, get in there. There we go. And you can see it's nice and tight, seated right into the back of that frame. Then we bring the brush plate across and we line this up on the two pins there, the two screws. This thing didn't want to come off. Now it doesn't want to go back on. All right, get back in there. There. So it's wanting to... There we go. Got that one down. There, that's sealed into place, and everything is lined up. So the first thing we want to do is get those two 
nuts back in place and we'll get them started. Then we'll put the screw in and then we'll tighten everything up. It's always good to work with a tray like this. That way your little parts don't roll away or escape. Especially if you're doing like I am today, working on a in a carpeted room. Some of these little things disappear on you. You have to crawl around a while to find them. Just tighten these two down. Now I don't cinch them down real hard. I tend to just snug them up so that they're just hand tight. Just enough so they don't fall off when I'm running it. Now we're ready for the brushes. And you can see there's a little bit of shiny on the on the brush end there. Usually on these brushes, there's one end that's got the, the little slot. That's the one I usually leave out. And that's kind of where the spring sets in. Now to put the spring back in, all you really need to do is just pull that up. And it snaps right down in there. And let's use that little smaller one there. There we go. And that is in place. Next thing we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to oil and grease. Now, where I put the oil, well, what did I do with the oil? I know I brought it out here. There we go. All right. Now where we want to oil is, not sure how well you'd be able to see it, but there's, you see there's a, there's a uh, bearing here that the axle comes through. Now let's get, get that Q-tip in here so you can't pull a little of that lint out that's wound around there. Now let's make Let's just take a break here and let's. All right, up. now we're ready to go ahead and oil these. There's a lot more stuff in there than I thought. There, then the ones in the front. The ones in the front aren't as easy to access. And then you can see on this main gear here you see there's kind of a kind of a bearing type situation there too some some motors have just where it sits on a pin this particular one that it sits in it's got its own little bearing there and then this behind here because that's the little uh put the little plug that goes through the frame so it comes the axle comes through there and then you can see where the little felt sponge is here I want to put a few drops in that that keeps that keeps that uh, lubricated and then I always put something here and here just so they're not just metal to metal on those and usually just a little drop here and here 
though I don't, I've don't, I've never actually seen any of those wear out on that. But I always just like to make sure there's just a little something there. Now, as to greasing, I know some guys are real particular about the grease they use. I use what I happen to have now. One of the things that uh, the old the old uh, instruction sheets would show is that you could use Vaseline. Well, I didn't have any old Vaseline, but I did have this out of date vapor rub. It has the advantage of also smelling good when it's running. So it's basically Vaseline with a little stink to it. So we we'll just put some of that on the gears. And again, I haven't had any problems with this, but I'm about out of it. So I'm going to have to break down and actually spend the five bucks or whatever for something else to use in there. Get that on there. Give that a good healthy spin on that. And what we want to do is we want to clean those wheels up. So I'll do that. All right, got the wheels cleaned up. And now the one thing that this engine does have a problem with is the E unit is sticky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it with some electronic cleaner. What that's going to do to me, though, it's going to mean I can't run this engine for a, for a couple hours because I want to make sure that uh, gets evaporated out of there. Otherwise, it could be really exciting. It'll become a smoking, sparking, flaming locomotive, which it's not actually intended to do that. So we're going to take a little break and then we're going to finish putting it back together. All right, let's finish this thing up. Now I've got the LED bulb we're going to put back in there. And we're ready to put it back together. Now you see the two little slots here. These go into this this plate right here where it's notched out. And that should line it up with the there we go. Should line it up right where the screws need to go. Okay, be that way. And most of the marks, this is the way the motors come in and out. Now, some of the later diesels, they, they had a little different setup. So this is a case where you got fat fingers and little bitty screws here, so. magnetic screwdriver that's always handy there we go Come on, there we go. All right. And we're ready to try it out. 